commentator did not mention the name of the author, John McCain, nor did he state that the poem was the work of a colored man. Perhaps he did not know, but I felt profoundly gratified and justified. I felt assured that if we must die, it was just what I intended it to be, a universal poem. And wherever men are pressed with their backs against the wall, abused, outraged, and murdered, whether they are minorities or nations, black or brown or yellow or white, Catholics or Protestants or pagans fighting against the terror, if we must die, could be appropriately read. If we must die, let it not be like hogs, hunted and penned in an inglorious spot, while round us bark the mad and hungry dog, making their mock at our accursed lot. If we must die, oh, let us nobly die, so that our precious blood may not be shed in vain. Then even the monsters we defy shall be constrained to honor us so dead. O oh, kinsmen, we must meet the common foe. Those far outnumbered, let us show us brave, and for their thousand blows, deal one death blow. What though before us lies the open grave? Like men, we face the murderous, cowardly pack, pressed to the wall, dying but fighting back. Think of the imagery he's using here. The dogs of the white people and the hogs of the blacks. The next line is using the dogs making their mock at our accursed lot. The word mock as a noun means an object of mockery, which shows how the dogs, or white attackers, are humiliating the hogs or blacks. A cursed lot means cursed group. In this case, the group is the entire black race. This is significant because the black race has struggled so much that it is almost as if they are cursed. In the next couple of lines, McKay says, If we must die, or let us know we die, so that our precious blood may not be shed in vain. Here, McKay explains how the black people do not want their deaths to be meaningless. Think of how meaningless they, um, they were meant to feel in so many ways and for so many years. Following this line, he says, And even the monsters we defy don't need strength to honor us, though dead. It is important to note that now the dogs or attackers have turned into monsters. McKay adds that the blacks will defy these monsters if they fight and die nobly, which shows that they are going to resist. They are not going to give up. When he says, don't be constrained to honor us though dead, he means that the blacks are going to fight and are going to die so bravely that even their enemy is going to be forced to honor them. McKay continues, oh, kinsmen, we must meet the common foe. This is significant because earlier, now to be as kinsmen, once blood relations. Very similar to how Frederick Douglass referred to his fellow slaves as being part of a brotherhood. This shows that ever since slavery, the black races felt that they had needed to stick together as a family in order to survive. Now, McKay is referring to the monsters as a foe, or enemy, and the fact that it is a common enemy means that all of the blacks are together in this fight. Next, McKay says, though far outnumbered, let us show us brave. This line shows that even though the blacks know they are outnumbered and are the underdogs, they're going to stick together, be brave, and fight for their rights. And they continues, and for 
there are thousands of lowers to do one death blow. This line concludes the cave's motivational section of the poem, and this is the last part where Rathay tries to explain to his kinsmen that all they need is one shot, or one death blow, to defeat the whites. When Rathay continues and says, Where fell before us lies the open grave? In plain speech, he is asking, Is there anything else in store for us but death? In other words, he tells his kinsmen that they might as well fight and die nobly. The last line follows, like men will face the murderous cowardly path, pressed to the wall, dying, but fighting back. Again, it is important to note that at the beginning of the poem, the black men are referred to as hogs, and now that they call them men. The landscape here emphasizes that the cave realizes that this battle might not be victorious for his black kinsmen, but he believes it is important to face the white murderous cowardly path and fight to their death. now in fighting off their white oppressors, but if they fight and defy the whites, in the future, the whites might be defeated. Too few black writers exist in American literature today, and a piece from this time period, 1990, is often missing. Significant works by black authors that are commonly included in American literature's course include The Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass by Frederick Douglass himself, And that's a scary um, truth about slavery. So he was actually considered um, quite a liberal in uh, a liberal and um, oh, there's a word I can't say right now. Uh, but he definitely was not a pacifist. He went out and said, "You must fight for your rights." Very assertive and aggressive um, compared to some others who said, you know, either assimilate or just get educated or just uh, put your best foot forward. He said, "You need to fight for your rights." So rewrite the poem, analyze it, and put in, interpret it um, in their own words. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you want to flip the lights on, maybe? Yeah, I do that. Oh, my gosh. Chris, don't bash the teacher. I didn't even 
Okay, should should everyone be in a group, or is it okay if some choose not to be in a group and just do it on their on their own? own? Okay. Is Grace coming to our group? Probably not. She hates us. Are you talking to me? <laughs> No, she's way. she's talking in third third person like that though. What do you want? You said are you coming to our group? I can. Yeah, I can <laughs> Should all these assignments that we've done be in our folder? Yes. Yeah, that's a good point to make. Grace just asked about your assignments that you've done for each of the students. Um they should all be in your folder, and if you have not graded yours and gotten the grades to me, you need to do that. 